Hello, this is Jared from Commit Quality. In this video, we're going to go over grouping and organizing tests. If you're new to Playwright, you've probably been used to writing tests all within a test file without any kind of organizational grouping. And that's what you can see on the screen here where we have test one, test two, test three, all just living within this uh, example spec TS file. Now, this is acceptable and you might want it. However, in most real cases, you're going to want to group tests within a test file. Not only does this help with readability, but it also acts as a way to keep code to the dry principle, which is do not repeat yourself. I want to talk about two different ways of grouping, both using a describe block. The first way I want to speak about is uh, anonymous describe. And this is good if you want to maybe just group tests and do things like have a common config option for a group of tests. Jumping right into this then, let's just execute these tests at the moment and I'll show you what they're actually doing. It's very simple, let's just go into a web page and we log in the URL that it's on. So if I say npx playwright test, what we should see that the three tests here are going to run because they're the only ones in my project. And also it's going to go to the base URL which is defined in my config which I'll show you in a second. And it's just going to log out what the URL is. So you can see it logged out Google, 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 all great. This is coming directly from my project of Chromium. I only have one project, which is why I haven't had to specify um, the project option uh, via the command line. And you can see the base URL is google.com. Now, if I wanted to say, okay, I want these first two tests to go to Amazon and then this last one to stay on Google, we can use an anonymous describe to do this. So let's jump into it and say test.describe, which is just going to have the two tests below it in it. So we'll say test.describe and then it's going to be an anonymous callback function. And we'll put that there. And for now, all I want to do is move these two tests inside this block. And what I can say now then is the tests inside this block can be scoped to a different base URL. And to do this, I can say test.use. And this is going to override the config we have inside here. So I can say base URL and let's change that to uh, HTTPS Amazon.co.uk. Great. So let's just understand this a little bit before we actually execute the tests. What this should be doing is saying everything inside this describe block, which is test one and test two, but not test three because that's outside of it should be using this base URL. It's going to overwrite from Google, from the config, and it's going to use this local uh, config value to say one and two should now go to Amazon and print at Amazon. However, test three should still be Google because we have scoped this inside this describe block. So let's execute the tests. Oh, they failed because I added triple T. So let's save that and rerun that. Great stuff. So what you've just seen here now then is the two tests went to Amazon and then the test three, which is outside of this described block is still going to Google because that's defaulting back to our uh, base URL. And like I said, this is called an anonymous describe and it's good if you just want to group the tests and do things like this where you want to just have a common config option for those groups of tests. Now, the more likely describe you're going to be using is a named one. So to do that, all you have to do is to turn an anonymous into a named is just add a title here. So we could say um, group of tests one. As you can see, nothing has changed here. All we're really doing is giving some context to the group of tests. So you might have a, a, a lot of tests inside your test file and you might want to group them by functionality and that's what you could do. You could group them by um, say, this is a group of regression tests. The other one's a group of smoke. So let's just execute that. And what we should see is the exact same outcome. It still goes to Amazon instead of Google. And all we've done is we defined some context to our tests. Awesome, it's the exact same outcome. Now you can have multiple describe blocks inside a test file as well. So if I just copy this and paste it down below, I can say group of tests two. And then so we've got a group in here, 
which is group of tests one, and then you've got two tests inside there. Then I've got a group of tests two with two tests inside it as well. And still we have this test living outside. So that's completely fine. We can delete that. We can keep it there. It doesn't have to be inside um, any block, any described block is what I'm getting at. So let's run that again. And what we'll see now, we'll have five tests and you'll see that when they be an output, it'll show group of test two and then one, two. So you've got your group one here, which you're executing. Awesome. So then you've got a group of test two which you're executing, and then you've also got test three, which is obviously not inside um, a describe block. And one last thing I wanted to show you was that you can also nest the describes. In here, let's say uh, we want to create another describe, so we'll say test.describe, and we're going to give it a name of maybe group 2.1, so just pretend it's 2.1 as in it's nested in. We then want to create our callback function, and let that live in there. And what I can do now, I can say, right, we've got these two tests inside the group. Let's tidy that up a bit. We'll put that still inside. We'll put it at the top level. I could say, let's copy one of these and put it in here. So tidying that up a little bit, what you're seeing is you've got your group of tests two. You've then got a nested group inside it which I've called group 2.1. And then we've got that test inside there. And once again, we could say, let's scope the base URL inside this group, which is nested inside of group of test two, to something else. So we tell you, we'll change it to YouTube. Awesome, let's save that. And now what we should see is, let's rename that just so it makes a little bit more sense to YouTube. And we're gonna run them. And the exact same outcome, but we can have six tests. And what we should see now is everything inside group of two minus the nested group will go to Amazon. Uh, the one nested will go to YouTube because that's where we've changed the base URL. And then all the others be exactly the same. We still got that one living outside for whatever reason, if, if it didn't really fit within a group, or you could put it in an anonymous group. Okay, so that's our group of one. That went Amazon, Amazon, we should see YouTube popping up when that one's done. There we are, YouTube's popped up. It's a little bit um, untidy because they're running in parallel, but you see it's gone Amazon, Amazon, YouTube, Amazon, Google. And then you've got the Amazon one again, which is exactly the output we'd expect. It's just a little bit untidy. Probably should have run this um, without parallelization. But you see the gist of it is how you can control all these different factors. You can have hooks inside it so uh you might have i don't know if the hooks video would be released yet but you can have hooks nested inside the blocks as well and we'll go over that in the hooks video but yeah that's that's how we can start grouping tests and keeping things a bit more organized and uh tailoring certain configuration values or certain setup or teardown to groupings of tests as always if you have any questions please leave a comment below and have a good day